And this is what the Bible describes as this, the name of the person that sat on that pale horse is called death. It's a person. Death is a spirit. Death is a person. So some unmasked command. Do you understand that? Some unmasked. And he has a destination. Hell, we see, but some mama come and hell in Zao. Hell. But hell is a person as well. Hell is living, it's a living organ. That's why the Bible says, hell has enlarged itself. So when death has come, he takes you to hell. Hell is not where God stays. It's where the devil is. With his entourage. Go to Romans, Revelation 20. I'm, I'm just showing you something. We're just unmasking this guy. He just comes with his small entourage. He cannot just come immediately. His powerful weapon is fear. When there's too much fear in the body of Christ, for example, do you know that, it, let me give an example. One of the things that, 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 that death, that you could see death was coming. And then the body of Christ, thank God for the body of Christ because they resisted it. He came and says, oh, coronavirus, we're going to kill millions and millions of people. Even today, not even 20,000 people are dead because of coronavirus. They dug graves to make you to be afraid. When you became afraid, then he comes knocking with the flu. Say, I'm going to die. I'm going to. Uh, when the flu comes and he says, I resist you. Oh, my God, I'm not. You will learn from it. Did I say Revelation 20? Verse, let's go to verse number 13. Are you there? Ah, look at look at what happened. Look look at his destination. Death has a destination, together with hell. Are, are you learning something today? Okay. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Uh, if I had time, I will explain the sea here. It's not the sea that you are thinking about. Okay, but that's not for today. And death, look at that. And death and hell. Delivered up the dead which were in them. So those people that are dead that went to hell. Is it perfect? Death delivered those people. Hell delivered those people. Look at the destination of death. And they were charged every man according to their works. Go, go, go to verse 14. I think it's verse, it's verse 14. Go. And death and hell. Look at that destination. Are you there? Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Satan will also go there. Satan will also go there. Are you catching it? And Satan had the power of this angel. Because because So you cannot say these things because they will say you are insensitive. You, you cannot say these things because they will say, oh, this pastor is an insensitive pastor. But here's the truth. Death will go to, hell, will go to the lake of fire. And the Bible says this is the second death. The first death is a person when he dies, he does not know Christ Jesus. And that person's destination is, in, is hell. But hell is not the last destination of that person. The destination of that person is the lake of fire. If we had time, we'll go, if you go there to, the rest, to all that chapter, you will discover that the destination of those that we gave up, verse 13, they went to the lake of fire even themselves. But thank God you are not going there. Say, I'm 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 not going there. Say, I have Christ in me. I am born again. And then my destination 
is heaven. Yes. Hallelujah. So you know it. So don't be afraid. So I'm, I'm quitting fear because I know when you talk about these things, people start to be afraid and, uh, and they're afraid and they're afraid and they're afraid and they're afraid. So you're not, you must not be afraid. You're not going there. Jesus Christ lives in you. And I'm giving you power over this person. So, number one, we know we got in Revelation 6 that he is a person. And number two, we understood that this death is going to the lake of fire. The second death. And when I am not going there, because you have Jesus Christ, you are a new creation. New creation people are not destined to go to hell. And hell is under the devil. Most the Old Testament, when they talk about hell, they talk about the grave. That's why when the Bible talks about believers, they say believers, they sleep. They don't die. Believers, they sleep. He says, one of the reasons says, the believers, they sleep early because they don't understand what they have. In Corinthians 11, we're talking about communion. It says they die early. It says many of you die before their time. They sleep before their time. Because they don't understand the power of Jesus Christ. They don't understand the death of Jesus Christ. Now, let's go to Hebrews 2. So that you can understand these things. Listen, Pastor Alabama, you, know, you get to understand this thing. You will deal with these things decisively. You go to decide. First is a decision. Then action. Once you decide, you make up your mind. Look at that. For as much, let's read all of us this verse. of the flesh that is the blood of Christ and the blood of Jesus. He says you share in this thing. And then he says even I Jesus shed in this thing. Then he tells you something important here. He says through death when Jesus Christ died he did something amazing for the blood of Christ. Something amazing. Something amazing for the blood of Christ. What is amazing? Through death he destroyed the one who carried the power of that angel. Satan had the power of death. That means that angel was under his control. Jesus, when he died, he destroyed him. Are you here, church? That's why in Revelation 1, uh, he says, I am Jesus alive. I was dead, but now I am alive forevermore. He says, I have the keys of death and hell. Oh, this is so big, Pastor Lord, mm, Let's go to that verse. Revelation 1, verse 18. Go to Revelation 1. What a big verse. You combine, can you combine Revelation 1 and Hebrews 2? Okay, maybe let's read them. We'll combine them. It says, let's read. I am that liveth. Do you see that? Jesus. He says, I'm alive. I was dead. And now, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Amen means so be it. And I have the keys of hell and death. Now, <laughs> think about this thing. I want you to think. Think with me, church. Jesus, here is hell, here is death. This is Jesus speaking. This is Jesus speaking. You're going to remember the verse that I started earlier with. This is Jesus. says, Now, says, Hokola. Now, Gugufala. Remember when Mundu Alpha, the angel of death, comes, he takes that person. If you, if you have ever spoken to people who are dying, they will tell you something. There's never a figure about your land. Have you ever had such? Then you know that, that the, the angel of death has come. Those of you, 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 you one day, no cool and no born. 
miraculous. And then you know that the angel of death has come. But if that person is under such a spell, if you can understand the keys that Jesus Christ has, he says, I was dead. Now I am alive. Then I have the keys of that hell. I have the keys of that death. How did he get the keys? He died. And the Colossians told us that the day Jesus Christ died, he threw off principalities. He threw off powers. He triumphed over them. Making a public spectacle of them. Taking those keys of death. Taking the keys of hell. Then what did he say? He says, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatsoever you allow, you allow. Then he gave you the responsibility. You, 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 you. That's grace. Whatsoever you, 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 you allow. Here on earth is allow. That tells me something very important. That when death comes in your life or in your family, you are responsible for it. People don't want to listen to that. They say, Pastor, that's a lie. It's not a lie. Jesus says, Behold, I give you the keys of the kingdom. He says, All power, all authority has been given unto me. And I give you those keys. Whatsoever you allow here on earth, I allow it. Because I've given you the keys. It's not your problem. That means by the keys of the kingdom, by the keys of death and hell, I can close a door of death in my life. That through death, what did he do? Through death, he might do what? Destroy him who had, look at that, that's past tense. He had he does not have. He had the keys. I mean, he had the power of death. That is the devil. So he tells you that the devil at one stage, he had the power of death. But now he doesn't have. Because Jesus says, I, have, I, I, I died and I rose and I have the keys of death and hell. So the keys are with Jesus. Because Jesus is, he took it from that guy. When Jesus Christ died, he took the keys from the devil. What's the one is I'm unmasked. If you, is, the matter is about you believing. Do, so if you can believe this truth. If you can, this is truth. And this is truth that people don't want you to know. Satan, if you know this truth and believe it, you will not die. That doesn't mean death will not try and visit you. He will come. But if you know who you are, if you know your rights, last week I told that if people come and arrest you, you don't know your rights, you'll go to jail. But if you say, hey, where is the warrant of arrest? Or wh wh how, how, what gives the right to search my house? They have to produce a, a, warrant of, uh, a search warrant. But if they don't have, you can say, go back. So now Satan, if, say, now I'm saying, if what my rights are about Gufa, now my rights are. He says, began a man, agasa now. That's why he behaves as if he still have the power. That's the behavior of Satan. Because he doesn't understand. He behaves like that. Death comes into marriages. Death comes into businesses. Death comes into, into homes. That's why we have broken homes. He starts by destroying them. Death comes. Death comes through finances. People find that death, the angel of death is operating. Death comes through health. He comes and destroys the health of the believers because the believers decide not to exercise their rights. Jesus says, I have, the right. I have given you the keys of death and hell. It says, all power. In Matthew 28, it says, all power belongs to me. Behold, all power. If you can imagine this thing, if the power, if the church of Jesus Christ can believe this thing, the rapture will come. The rapture, because no man can destroy the body of Christ. The body of Christ seems so weak today because the body of Christ don't know their eyes. They still believe in people. They still believe in pastors. They still believe in prophets. They don't believe in this word. If they believe in this word that Jesus Christ had the the keys of death and hell. Hell will not 
operate in your lives. What hell does, it comes and brings all sorts of pressure upon the believers. Have you ever seen believers say, my life is like hell? Because hell has come. He has visited the believer. If they only knew, if they only knew that hell does not have any power, Jesus has the keys of hell. Not only they knew mentally, because the problem is that you can know this thing mentally. But if you can know it in your heart, if you, listen, how faith operates. Let me tell you what, how faith operates. Faith operates when your mind agrees with your heart entirely. You will find that your mind says this, but your heart doesn't say it. And there's no faith. Faith is when the two align, and that's a force that the devil cannot stand. When your mind, you can, you can read Psalm 23 with your mind, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But if the heart doesn't agree, you will forever live in want. Are you catching what I'm saying, church? Are you catching what I'm saying? Are you catching what I'm saying? So, if you understand that death has no power, death has, hell has no power, Jesus has the keys. And 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 when he spoke to the to the church of Philadelphia, he says in the church of Philadelphia, he says something very important. He says, "I have the key of David. I open when no man close. The key of David. What is the key of David? Worship. So." Pastor Don, let's gonna wrap up this thing quickly now. Let's pray. I want us to pray. Hmm. Now, remember, I first started with uh, Romans 3.25. Let's go to Romans 3.25. Being justified freely by his grace, ne? Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Hmm. Being declared not guilty. Now, I want you to see this verse in Job. You love this verse. Look, he says, now, now you don't understand it. Let's go to Job 3. Did you see that? Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Job in the Old Testament understood something. Mm. Let's go. Job. Understand the verse later. Good job to understand. He says, then God says, is, then God is gracious to him and says, deliver him mm. from going down the pit of destruction. I have found a ransom. That is redemption. A ransom is when someone pays for someone. Let's say about kidney pill, backbone pill. Then let's say about is a ransom, a payment. It's like what the devil is dying. He wants to kill you to the pit, put you to the grave. And then, who's no? Ungam fagem kotsin. Ungam faget fen. Says tole a payment. A price of redemption. An atonement. Do you see what do you see that? I'm teaching you, church. Believe what I'm telling you. Hmm? Then there's a when 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 but the totally atonement, not a payment. There are results. Verse 25 give you results of that payment. Then the man's flesh shall be restored. Healing. It becomes fresher and more tender than a child. He returns to the days of his youth. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh. It says, hey. Okay. Did you, did you see the Amplified? Let's go and read with that other version. Now you, you got the picture now. Look at this. The angel showed kindness. That is, that's why you are saying God there. Then he says the angel. 
Now, if you read before prior that, you discover that there was something that was happening. The guy was dying. The guy had flesh. Is that always? But now, 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 the Bible says God showed him kindness. Commanding. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Commanding death to release him. Why? Commanding death to release us. Why? Because the price was paid. It's in the Old Testament. He's showing Jesus Christ there. Being justified freely. By his grace. In the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. He says, hey, he commands death. He says, you death, leave him alone. Why must you leave him alone? The price has been paid. And verse 25, verse 25 says, Our health is restored. We feel it again. Pastor one, Jesus did it all. He has the keys of death and hell. He has commanded death to leave you. And there are rewards when you believe this thing. The reward is health. The reward you become young and rich of nation. But if you can believe Jesus, the death of Jesus Christ is not about sins only. It's about your health. The death of Jesus Christ is about forbidding death. Death cannot enter your home. When death enter your home, you have allowed it. God says, I have the keys of death and hell. Death must not enter. It will not go to allow it. We have allowed it far too long. We are unmasking him today. The pastor Lord says, Sim Vumenes cast the sea, say, this is good far, not anymore. Just not the key, this hawker, just not the key, the good far, not more, this is good far, Auga Vumele, the Gungena, Moba, I Patali, where I price. The price has been paid. I said the price has been paid. Jesus did it all. It's not about sins. Grace has come. Grace has come. When sin abounds, much more grace abounds. Let grace abound. The grace is that you will not die before your time. I say you will not sleep early. I say you will not sleep early. I say you will not sleep early. I say you will not sleep before your time. You will not. We unmask death. We speak life. We speak life. The spirit of life has come. The spirit of life has come. I say the spirit of life has come. The same spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you. Did you, did you, did you understand that? Did you understand that? Ah. If your spirit, you are dead because of sin. But the Bible says the spirit is life because of Jesus Christ. Shout, say, I have the life of God in me. 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 Shout, I will not die before my time. Say, death, I forbid you. Say, by the keys of the kingdom. I lock you never to enter my house, never to enter my family, never to enter my children. The blood of Jesus Christ has spoken. The blood of Jesus Christ has spoken. You are not entering my life. You are not entering my finances. You are not entering my house, my family. You are not entering my marriage. Oh, you are not entering in my health. I'm restored like a youth. I'm restored like a young man. I'm restored. I'm renewed like an eagle. I'm renewed like an eagle. So I will not die. I will not die. I will not die. I refuse to die. I reject death. Death come out of my life. Death come out of my body. Death come out of my marriage. Death come out of my finances. My finances will not die. I will refuse to be stressful. I bind you in the name of Jesus. And I forbid you to operate in my life. You will not operate in my life. 
You will not operate in my family. You will not operate in my children. I will not die by accident. No accident shall befall me. As I drive, no accident. As I fly, no accident. As I walk, no accident. No robbery is coming to my family. My daughters shall not be raped. No rape shall come in my family. No gender-based violence coming to my family. Death, you are not coming. Death, you are not coming. I stand against you. Look at it. The, the reason I'm showing you this. Go, go, go to the book of uh, 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 James. James chapter 4 verse 7. Look at this. But son, ma'am. He says, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Now, remember, Hebrews 2.14 said about the devil. He had the power of death. And God saying, don't ask God concerning the devil. Resist him. Look at the TPT, how he puts it nicely. <laughs> you know how a bully comes. You know, ma, most of the time, my bullies, those of you, the young people, now they, they've got a nice English name, bullies at school. You know the bullies? The bullies sometimes, they take chances. You understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> and that's how the devil is. He's is, is, is a bully. He doesn't have the power. He bullies you. The Bible says he's roaring like he's not. He's roaring like. Eh? Go to, to, to Peter. Peter. First Peter 5, 8. Is, that's, that's where you find it. It says be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, the enemy, is roaring did you see that? We are bored. As, as a roaring lion. As a roaring lion. It's like, he, he is like a roaring lion. Walking about. Seeking whom he may devour. But he says, be sober. Be vigilant. Now we are being sober. What makes us to be sober? Is the word of God. Be sober. Don't lose focus when he comes. That's what he's telling you. As for coming, he's coming. He says, don't lose focus. Don't lose, be sober. Be sober, vigilant. In other words, knows his strategies. That's why I'm unmasked, Kalumund. 